afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's a bit busy and a bit noisy. I've got different things going on here. But in this film today, I'm concerned with these. Yep, another week of windfall apples from my apple tree means it's time to make another cider. So I'm just going to put all these in the sink to give them a wash. Okay, I'm going to leave these to soak for an hour, carry on making lunch, I'll get back to you this afternoon. Now there's my big pan, it's time to get these out of the sink. Along with my big chopper, and for each apple, I'm just going to cut it down the middle, like so, pop it in the pan. I'm doing that just to break open the skin, to expose the flesh because I'm going to break the apple down with steam and it's easier once you've cut it in half. Okay, the pan's now full, so I'm going to add a pint of just normal tap water and that will put about a centimetre of water in the bottom of the pan. Then lid goes on, gas goes on and that's just on a nice and low flame. I don't want this to fry, I want it to come to a gentle, gentle simmer. So I've still got more apples left in the sink. I'll need to do this also with another pan. So I'll come back to you when I've done that. So I've now got a wok and a saucepan of apples on the sink. I need to let these come to a simmer and for the steam to break down the apple flesh. That's gonna take an hour or so. I'll come back to you then. Right, a bit of time has passed. Let's have a look. I'm just going to get a potato masher in there and I can feel that these are still hard so what I'll do is I'll try and bring some of the ones at the bottom to the top and some of the ones to the top at the top to the bottom. The level of liquid though has risen massively in the pan which is a great sign. Right, 15 minutes later. I think I might need to turn this off at this point because that is actually boiling. Oh yeah. These have really softened now. Yeah, that's done. So all I'm going to do with this is put the lid back on and just leave them to sit there. And they will further break down and juice as they're sat there in heat. And as for the other pan, the wok, these aren't quite there yet, so I'll give these a bit longer. Okay, I've switched them both off now and these definitely look nice and mashable so I'm just going to leave them all to cool down before going to the next step okay a couple of hours later I've mashed it all down with a potato masher so it's all now nicely pulpy and I'm just going to pour everything into the wok because I want to reuse this big pan I'm hoping it will fit I've done this before and it usually just just does almost okay that's now all in i need to get it out before it floods out it's going to go into this colander suspended over this big saucepan so i'm just going to use a ladle to remove some so this is what i've got in my colander and now i need to push it through to separate the good stuff from all the rubbish and i'm going to do so with this wooden spoon initially so this is the labour intensive bit, this is the arm ache, but it's worth it. It does make cider nicely this way. I'm not having an apple press, um, and I've not really been particularly interested in buying one to be honest. I've just found that this works really well, and the cider tends to be really clear too, which is a bonus. Okay, I'm going to get on with doing this first colander full. When I finish this first bit, I'll show you what I've got and get back to you then. Right, that's the first sieve full done and if I just lift that up, you'll see there's loads of good stuff on the outside underneath and that's the puree which has come through. I've got to do that for the entire wok of apple. It's going to take me a good half an hour at least. There's no point in you watching that. I'll come back to you when it's all done. That took some doing. 30 minutes later, let's have a look. So I've got a lovely pan full of apple puree. Absolutely beautiful. 
and this is what I'm going to use to make the base of my cider. However, I'm not making it today, I'm going to make it tomorrow. I've got a few things I need to do this evening. So I'm going to put this into plastic tubs, put it in the fridge overnight, and I'll come back to you tomorrow for what will be preparation day two, stroke, brew day one. Catch you tomorrow. Good afternoon from the kitchen, folks. It's the next day. And now I'm going to put my cider together and you know what flavour cider it is because you've seen the title of the film. And now I'm going to tell you what goes into my mango and ginger cider. A flavour I've never made before and I'm really, really keen to try. My mango is coming from this Wovich mango syrup. Now we say Lowitz. Uh, in Britain, but I think it's pronounced Wovich, but if any Polish speakers could uh, confirm or deny that for me, I'd appreciate it. But this is great stuff. It doesn't contain any nasty additives at all. It literally is uh, sugar and mango syrup. So it's really, really good stuff. I'm putting three of these bottles in and each bottle is 400 ml. So that's 1.2 litres of Wovich mango syrup. My ginger is coming from Whitworth's Crystallised Ginger. I might not use the full packet, I'm going to open it and decide, but I'm going to break this down. So mango and ginger. It's a cider. These are the apples that you saw. There is six kilograms, just over actually, I think it was 6.1 kilograms of apple puree from the windfall apples from the garden. There will be two and a half kilos of dextrose monohydrate brewing sugar going into this to get that ABV up. I'm going to be looking for a cider between 7 and 8%, it might just tickle 8% and go over, but somewhere in that ballpark. My yeast of choice today is going to be Gervin or Gervin GV13 cider yeast. I shall use the whole packet, and to keep it extra happy, it's going to get some yeast nutrient from Young's. I'm going to add some pectolase, because there will be pectic enzymes here, and possibly here, which might make this a cloudy brew, and hopefully that will help to break those down. And in terms of spring water, I'm going to be using between 15 and 20 litres. My brewing vessel of choice today is going to be the Rich's Fermentation Bin, which is absolutely awesome. It's a fairly straightforward process, this. I've done the hard work mashing the apples up, so let's get it together. So first things first, I'm going to put an entire 5 litres of spring water into my big big saucepan. So this spring water is being used rather than tap water because the tap water where I live in Leeds is quite chlorine -y. It's not always good for brewing with. So this is a safety net and to be quite honest it's pretty cheap. So I'm going to put the gas on. Woof! And I'm going to turn that down to a nice reasonably low temperature. I don't want this to boil to death or anything like that. Next I'm going to add my brewing sugar. And it is literally a case of very gently tipping it in and trying not to get it all over the cooker. So with my big spoon I'm just going to give this a stir around because I don't want the sugar to stick to the bottom, which it's not doing. Now, this won't need to come to anything like a simmer for the sugar to dissolve, but I do want the sugar to dissolve before I go into the next step. So while I'm waiting for that to dissolve, let's have a look at that crystallised ginger. So I'm just get the packet open. Yeah, I'm going to break this down a bit. They're in quite sizeable pieces like this. It's gorgeous as well. Mmm. I love ginger. It's a 175 gram packet. I don't think I'm going to add it all actually. I think there might be a bit too much, but first of all I need to break this down. So I'm going to break it down using my coffee grinder, which should get it a bit more powdery. Well that didn't quite work because I won't call it powdery, but hopefully it's not all stuck in the top. No, it's not. So this is how it's gone. It smells gorgeous. It's absolutely fine like this anyway. I'll just use a spoon to scoop it in. I haven't used the whole packet. The 175 gram packet was too much. I've put 125 grams in. So I'm keeping 50 grams for something special. 
So just back to the five litres of water and sugar. And I can already see that the sugar is probably about 60% dissolved. It still looks quite white, but believe me, it's nothing like it was. So while I'm waiting for the sugar to dissolve and this water to warm up a bit, let's have a look at the bucket because it's time to get some bits and bobs in there. So I'm going to begin by chucking five litres of spring water straight in there. That was very satisfying. So using a spoon I'm going to get my ginger out of here. Oh it is very sticky. And into the water. I might need to give this a bit of a ooh, splashy. A mix around actually. Just to uh, guarantee it doesn't all sit just in a lump at the bottom. So that's where it is. Break it up with the spoon. I've used this before in brewing and it's been totally fine. I'm just going to break it up a bit. Now I'm looking at that ginger in the bucket. It doesn't look like that much. I think I'm going to put the rest in, but rather than put it in here, I'll put it in with the sugar water. So we'll see if that breaks it down a little bit more. I'm just wondering if the heat of the water might dissolve the crystallised ginger a bit. It is actually the ginger root that's got sugar, so it won't dissolve, but it might just break it down a little bit. Like sucking a sweet. I'll just chuck it in there. So now there's 175 grams gone in, minus those couple of pieces that I ate. And it's about 80% dissolved, but not 100% yet. So now back over here. I could have done a better job of taking that off. Anyway, I'm going to now get my mango cordial into the brewing bucket. Oh, it's nice and syrupy. I've got two more bottles to put in in exactly the same way. I'll come back to you when I've done that. So that's all my 1.2 litres of mango in there, so I'm just giving it a nice mix around. Right, back to the sugar water that's got some ginger in. Oh, we are nearly there. I'd say we're 95% sugar dissolved. So just while I'm waiting for the sugar water to finish dissolving, I'm going to add some dry ingredients into this, into the big bucket. So a pectolase, I'm going to get a rounded or heaped dessert spoonful. I'm going to do one of those. I'm going to do two of those. And you know what? I'm going to do three of those. I want this to finish clear if possible. It does help. Then the yeast nutrient. I'm not putting the yeast in yet, but I can put the nutrient in. So again, one rounded dessert spoonful. And I'm just going to put two rounded dessert spoonfuls in because there will be plenty of nutrient in this because of all the apple puree. So I'm just going to stir all that in. Back to the sugar water. Ooh, can I see the bottom of the pan? I think I can. Nearly. 98%. 2% to go. Okay, I'm just about satisfied that I'm there. It's got a tiny, tiny way to go, but I think overall you can see the bottom of the pan. So that says to me I can move to the next step. Right, the next step is to get the apples in there. Now, I don't want to boil the apples or simmer them, but you've got to bear in mind that these apples have been in the fridge overnight. So they're now down to about four degrees Celsius wise. If I put that in the bucket as it is, it's gonna bring the temperature right down and it'll take ages to get back to temperature where the yeast can activate. So if I warm it slightly in this pan of water, then I can start uh, fermenting quicker basically. And that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna get my apples in. I'm just gonna pour them in and just scrape the tubs out. I don't want to waste any. Apologies for the background noise. I live next to an airport, which is actually really convenient. So that's the first lot of apples in and I'll just give it a stir, just so it mixes. I want it to break down a little bit, but I don't want to boil it at all. I don't need to do that. They were steamed yesterday. I just want them to come up to a bit of temperature. So I've got to get the rest of my apples in there. It's going to take me a couple of minutes to sort them all out. You don't really need to watch me do that. So I'll come back to you once they're all in there. Splash. 
Right, so I've got all my apples in there. Let's take a temperature test. So I've stirred this around. So the room temperature outside is 23 and this has gone up to 28. So that's good. That means I can turn the heat off. Right, it's time to get this put together. Right, clean jug goes into the apple sugary gingeriness. And I'm just going to pour that into the big bucket in the sink. Try not to make mess. Nigh on impossible. Right, I think I'm feeling brave enough to pour the rest. So there's a lot of bits and bobs stuck around there. I'm just going to give the pan a bit of a, a rinse around with some spring water. And then I'm going to tip all that in. So the scale on the bucket goes up to 22 litres. I want to be able to get 20 litres out of this, which is possibly easier said than done. But I'm going to pour this uh, rest of this spring water in, or at least some of it in. Try not to make a mess. What am I doing? I've gone over 22. I'm on 23 litres. In for a penny, in for a flipping pound. So that's the current state of where we are. I want to give this a good stir around. I definitely want this to be well mixed so we don't have layers of different liquids in there because I need to get a consistent gravity reading. Right, this is just room temperature. It's fine for taking the gravity reading. So in goes the hydrometer. Slightly higher than what I wanted it, but I can live with it. So I'm starting on an original gravity of the Battle of Hastings, 1066, 1.066. So I'm probably going to be looking at what is actually now into rocket fuel territory. If this goes the whole way, I could be looking at something approaching 9%. Let's see. Right, I'm going to get my GV13 in. I'm going to stick the whole packet in. I'm going to sprinkle it on top. And then I'm going to give it a stir in gently. I don't want it all sticking around the edges. But I'd like it to mix in there. This yeast is going to have an absolutely amazing time. It's warm enough. It's got a ton of sugar in. And there's a heck of a lot of nutrition in there. It's going to be happy yeast. And happy yeast means tasty cider. Right, let's get the lid on the bucket. Always has a good snapshot. I shan't put any water in the airlock for the time being because I want to move the bucket. And it acts like a lung and if you pick it up it'll suck the water into the bucket. So I'm just going to tidy round. As you can appreciate, there is a little bit of mess here that needs cleaning up. I'll come back to you when I've done that. Right, I've had a significant tidy round. I've got the dishwasher on, all the surfaces are nice and clean, and now the bucket is labelled up. So it's mango and ginger cider, an original gravity of 1.066, and brew day one is the 1st of September 23. So you can see on the side of the bucket that I'm on 23 litres. I'm fairly hopeful that if I filter this properly, I should be able to get around about four full demijohns out of this. But we'll see anyway. The last one I did, I did pretty much the same way and that's how it worked out. Anyway, I'm going to get some water in the airlock. Get the top on, keep any bits and bobs out. Right, we'll have an update when I see some bubbles in there. Probably tomorrow, but it might be tonight. Catch you later. Good morning from the kitchen, folks. I'm here with a brew day two update. Let's have a look. And you will find that fermentation 
is happening. It's not fast, it's not furious, but I'm getting a big fat gassy bubble come through about every 20 to 30 seconds, just like that one. You can see that all the apple matter has risen to the top and this is what always happens when you use puree. So this is mostly liquid and there'll be a little bit of sediment in the bottom. But from my perspective, everything's going just fine. So I'll come back to you with an update in a few days time. I might take the lid off and give it a stir. I usually do. So I'll catch you then. Cheers. Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's brew day five for my mango and ginger cider. Let's have a look. Well, fermentation is still happening at a nice and steady rate. We'll get a good gassy bubble through oh, about every 10 seconds or so. Distinct apple puree layer just there. No visible sediment line in the bottom just yet. But what I'm going to do in this short segment of film is take off the lid and give it a stir to try and break up that puree and release some of the CO2 that's in there. So lid police, please look away. So before I go any further, I'll show you what it looks like. And this is what we've got. This is all the apple puree, which is just sat there in a big cake. I need to break that up now. So I've just got my nice big stainless steel spoon. I'm just going to break the surface and the CO2 comes flooding out. Sorry, Greta. It has to happen. It's an essential part of fermentation and it's a natural process. Oh, I can smell the mango. This is going to be a good one, I think. So I've broken the apple cake up. This will partially sink and then it will come back to the surface and the cake will reform again. That's enough for one day. So the lid goes back on. All snapped into place. And now I'm going to leave it for a good three days and then I'll do the same thing again. I won't film myself doing it twice, there's absolutely no point. So the next film that you see from me will be towards the end of fermentation. Okay, catch you then. Afternoon from the kitchen folks, it's brew day 15 for my mango and ginger cider and today it's racking day. Let's have a look at it. So here is the beast. Now the sun has literally just come out two minutes ago. It's a bit of a pain actually because it's made it very hot in here but it does mean that we can see enough through the bucket to see that the apple material has predominantly sank to the bottom and there's just a little bit left at the top. In terms of fermentation I'm probably getting a bubble a minute if that. So it's a good time today to use this jug to transfer it from the bucket into Demijohns and I will bottle from Demijohns. So to get it into the Demijohn I've got a funnel and inside the funnel I've got an old coffee machine filter. So before I begin, I need to get that off. Snap, right. That smells so mangoey, really delicious. That's what it looks like, but I want to get it transferred ASAP. So using the jug, it gets dipped into the cider and I've cleaned and sanitise the jug and then I pour this with all the bits and bobs in it through the filter and the funnel into the demijohn. Now time is of the essence because I don't want it to oxidise and I don't want to get any uh, unwanted creatures in there, any bits of flies or anything that they could be around. So it is just a case of pouring it through, pouring it through and pouring it through until the demijohn is filled up. Now you'll note that in the top of the filter all the apple material gets left behind. That doesn't get wasted, it will be going back out there onto the garden as fertiliser. But anyway this is quite a repetitive process so I'll come back to you when the first demijohn is filled. Okay I've got one down and three more to go. So this is the one that's done, so I just need to clean this up and then I'll label it and then I've got another three demijohns to do. I'm putting all my waste in this pan for now. I'll come back to you when the process is completed and show you what I've got. See you then. Hey folks, that process is over. Before I show you the demijohns, let me show you the waste, what I've got. So that's how much apple pulpy stuff has left and this is what didn't fit into the demijohns. So I'm going to put this in the fridge 
They're probably inside a plastic bottle, but this one I'm going to try now as a sampler. Now bear in mind this is unfined, it's cloudy still, but you know what? I'm interested in what the flavour is. It smells delicious, you can really smell the mango. Strong mango flavour. Strong cider flavour. The ginger doesn't come through right till the end, it's a warmer on the back of it. If I hadn't been told that ginger was in there, I might have struggled to work that one out, to be honest. But there's a distinct warming on the back end. It's not a ginger flavour. It's that warmth that rolls under your, over your tongue. I could have even thought there was a bit of chilli in it. Mango and chilli, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm going to put this in the fridge. I'm going to have a clean up in the kitchen and then I'll show you my Demi Johns. Right, ladies and gents, can we all just marvel at that lovely clean kitchen? Wife will be happy. In fact, she just made that earlier today and I'm looking forward to getting into it. That's a plum upside down cake. But that's not why we're here. We want to look at the cider and I've put that into the entrance porch, which is the coolest room in the house in terms of temperature. Here it is. At the minute it's 21.4 in here which is about three degrees cooler than the kitchen and about two degrees cooler than the living room so i've labeled the first image on fully mango and ginger cider 1.066 brew day one was the 1st of september 23 racked on the 14th of september 23 demi on number one two three four that came out in order that they came out so I'm going to leave these in my entrance porch and let them finish fermenting naturally and then I'm hoping Fingers crossed that they'll clear. Now, if they don't clear naturally, I will add finings to try and clear them. But first of all, I want to give them a chance to clear themselves before I go down that road. So I'm going to come back to you in a week or so's time and we'll have a look from there. OK, catch you later, folks. Good morning from the kitchen, folks. This is Big Brew Sunday. I've got a massive bottling to do, which I'm doing in this film. I've got a big racking to do. I've got lots of cleaning out and sanitising to do. I'm processing hops and I'm starting a new brew. It's mega. Let's crack on. So this is brew day 24. And on this day, I am bottling my mango and ginger cider. Here it is. I'm not clearing it with finings. I was thinking about doing, but I've decided not to because it's not doing a bad job on its own, to be quite honest. In a glass, I think it will look just fine. It is fairly opaque and it could be that there's some pectin haze in there. The sediment layer in the bottom of the Demijohns is minuscule. So I think it'll be just fine as it is. So I've got my bottles sanitised. I've got my plastic bungs having a last clean in some hot water. I've got some bottles in the sink. I've got my priming sugar ready. I've got my hydrometer tube. Let's do it. So I need to put some priming sugar in each bottle. This is standard household granulated sugar and all I'm using is a nice sort of rounded teaspoonful in each 700 or 750ml bottle. I forget, what are they? 700s or 750s? Anyway, the priming sugar is designed to be found by the yeast which is left in suspension in there. And when it finds it, it will smash it apart. It will create a secondary fermentation. That will create CO2. And the CO2 will build up pressure inside the bottles. And that pressure build up is what will give it a sparkle. That's the plan anyway. So I'll get my bung out. The siphoning tube goes in and I'm controlling the depth with the black clip at the top. I want it just above the sediment line and I've just hit it unfortunately and disturbed a little bit. Never mind, the first bit that comes out will be the more sedimenty bit and that's going into the hydrometer tube. Let's do it. Oh, hydrometer tube filled up. Boy, that got the back of my throat. Flipping egg. It tastes nice though, the mango certainly comes through. Oh, blimey. <coughs> Yeah, you know a case of it going down the wrong way? It went down the wrong way. Okay, first bottle nearly full. And on to the second bottle. Good stuff. Well, it certainly looks uh, nice in the Demijohn, and I can see that there is still some activity as well, because as I'm doing this, there are bubbles clung to the side of the tube that's gone in there. So I'm extremely confident this will be a good sparkler. And into bottle number three. And 
hand into bottle number four. You can see there how it's reacted to the priming sugar, so that's a good sign. It had completely stopped fermenting incidentally, so I haven't done this prematurely. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that this is over. So I did start to get a little bit of trub in this last bottle. I could have stopped it, but I decided to just let it go. It just means that this bottle will end up with a bit more sediment in the bottom. And it's not a full bottle, which surprises me, but I'll just top it up with what's in the hydrometer tube. Okay, before I can top that up, I need to take the final gravity for this brew. So I'm gonna dip the hydrometer in. Sound nice. And yep. Yeah. That has eaten up just about everything that's going to be in there sugar wise. I've finished on a final gravity that looks to me like 0 0.995 I'm going to say. 0 0.995. I'll just top this one up gently. Lovely. So I'll just work out the alcohol by volume for this brew. So I started off with an original gravity, a battle of Hastings 1066, 1.066. I deduct from that the final gravity, which is 0 0.995, and that equals 0 0.071. And then I multiply this figure by 131.25, which gives me a final ABV of, drumroll please. Oh! 9.3%. I was not expecting that. Okay, I am into rocket fuel territory. It's not a sessionable cider. Oh no, 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 no. This is one to be appreciated. So I now need to get my bottles bunged and caged. So here's one bottle. Here's the bung. It's been softening in hot water to make it malleable and clean. Push it in and then cage goes on top of bung. The cage is an essential safety feature and what the cage will do is keep that bung in place so when the pressure builds up inside the bottle and when the CO2 wants to make it sparkling and fizzy etc the bung won't go flying out like a missile because the cage is there to hold it in place. Okay so that is one bottle bunged and caged. I've got five more bottles in the sink to bung and cage. You don't need to see me do that. I'll come back to you when I've done them. So that's the first five bottles bunged and caged. I'm just gonna give them a quick shower because they've all got sticky residue on the outside. So I'm gonna put these bottles somewhere to drain. I've now got another three demijohns to repeat that entire process with, with the rest of the bottles. There's absolutely no point whatsoever in you watching me do that. It's exactly the same as what I've just done. So when I've got everything in the bottle, I'll come back to you. See you then. Okay, I need to label my bottles and I've got this Fomimo Bluetooth printer. It's connected to my phone and I've just made a nice and simple label like that. I need to print this out 22 times because that's how many bottles I've got. And I may run out of label as I'm doing it. And if so, no bother. So now I've got my labels printed. I just need to dry the bottles off individually. Find a label, stick it on, and there, we're done. I've got another 21 to do. Once I've done them, I'll come back to you. I'm back. The bottles are labeled, as you can see, and here they all are on top of my drinks cabinet for conditioning. So the conditioning process is whereby the yeast which is left in suspension in the brew finds the sugar, smashes it apart, creates some CO2, but it also gives time for the flavour to develop and also for it to become a bit more clearer. It's highly likely that those bottles will get a minute layer of sediment in the bottom and that's absolutely fine. And it should be a clearer brew than what was in the Demijohn. Now it's going to take at least a month for that to begin to happen. So I'll be opening these in between four and six weeks time. Overall, it's currently 19.5 in here, but we are now in autumn, so it will become cooler uh, with the ambient temperature. But that said, inside this drinks cabinet, I do have a light which comes on every evening and stays on for several hours, and that does warm the entire 
cabinet top up which is really good for conditioning. So the next segment of film we'll be opening and tasting and that'll be between four and six weeks from now so I'll catch you then. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's the grand opening night for my mango and ginger cider 9.3% ABV bottled on the 24th of September which is about six weeks ago now. I'm not quite sure what the brew day is for this film but it will appear at the bottom of the screen somewhere. So the bung, if you can just see there, is raised very slightly so that suggests to me that carbonation has happened, fingers crossed. Let's have a look. I need a fork and the tool for the job is a meat fork. Notice the prongs so you shove it under the side like that and just twist it and it just breaks it off. There you go. So it's not off the bottle, I'll still have to get it off the bottle but at least I can open the bottle. So am I going to get a pop? Oh a beautiful pop and we've got bubbles, a rush, we've got some vapour, everything a growing boy needs. Right let's get down to the serious business of the tasting. So how does it look? Oh that looks dreadful. Sorry, right, I'm going to have to get rid of that. That was a challenge. I've done it. Right, let's get that pour in. I want to look at it, see what it looks like in the glass. Carbonation, very evident, looks lovely actually. Nice creamy yellowy colour. There's a very slight pectin haze. Nothing to upset me. But overall, I'm quite happy with that. Colour wise, look good. Wow! Mango, mango crazy for the smell. Wow, that is absolutely mango-rific. Is that a word? No. I'm trying to think of a better word than mango-rific. I can't think of one. I can honestly say that that is one of the most pleasant smelling ciders I've ever made. Amazing. Right, the mango, unbelievable. I can't smell the ginger, so let's just see what happens. Huge hints of mango. Bush. Definite cideriness coming through in second place. I think the ginger's got a bit lost. Am I getting a warm back burner? I'm not sure that I am. So if I didn't know that ginger was in there, I wouldn't have known that ginger was in there. The flavour of it is unfortunately overpowered by the mango, which is so dominant, but actually really delicious. Beautiful cider, actually. So the syrup, the Vovich syrup, wow, yes, I recommend wholeheartedly. In terms of profile, it's a medium dry, it's not a dry dry. The flavour of the mango takes it out of the dry dry ballpark. It's a medium dry and it's extremely drinkable. It'd be a good summer side of this. I'd like to say it's sessionable, but at 9.3%, it's not sessionable. It's rocket fuel. Anyway, better get the uh, cover picture for the front of the uh, film. Thought I'd do it differently this time. So I hope you've enjoyed the film. I've enjoyed the process. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching this all the way through. And I'll catch you on the next film, whatever that may be. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those things because it helps my channel grow and that's what I'm ultimately trying to do now. So thank you for your support. Honestly, I really, really do appreciate it. I'm a genuine person and I really mean that. So thank you. Cheers to you and I'll catch you on the next film, brew, cooking, whatever that may be. See you later, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.